Hey guys, welcome back to Jace Do List. Today I've got my water cooler over here. It's a CW5000. Uh, it actually has a refrigerator and cools. And I'm going to show you your maintenance that you need to perform on this probably about every six months. Um, let's go and take a look at it. This is going with my old barn find that I found over here. This thing's probably six years old, been sitting around in my barn. It's gross. So let's take a look at it. Yuck. So this one in my old laser I found that I've been restoring. So it is really, really gross. The first thing you want to do is unhook it from your machine. There, make sure that all the power is off. Pull the little hoses that come out of the back from the machine. Um, either from the machine or from the cooler. The hoses aren't as important. But keep in mind that you're going to lose some water from your laser tube. Mine's not hooked up, so I can't show this to you. So your laser tube holds about a, a cup or two of water, depending on the size of tube that you have. Pull the... Um, They'll be on the back of your machine that's marked out. Pull that tube off, put a little cup of water in there, or a cup there, and catch your cup or two of water. Once that's done draining, then you can proceed to unhook the other um, other tube for the import. So let's go ahead and we'll do that process, which again, I can't show you, but I can't show you the rest. So come with me. By the way, if you have a CW5200 or a CW3000, the cleaning process is the same. You just either have a better refrigerator in yours or you don't have a refrigeration or compressor in yours but the cleanout process is the same stay tuned so your cooler should have a drain so we got the top plug up here and the bottom plug down here so we'll open this plug up to drain out the fluid that's in it might be a gallon or two or nothing so it looks like my I stored this with no water in it which was probably a good move on my point so that way I know that this doesn't have any uh, freeze damage or anything like that. Uh, when I'm done flushing, or not flushing, but when I'm done draining the system from fluid, I like to give it a flush with uh, my distilled water. So let's go get a little bit of that. I'll put a half gallon in there and we'll flush it out. Pull the top. So I have a little bit of an incline to get this to finish draining out here. Now we'll get the tools for the next step. So there's two little thumb things here. Sometimes there's two screws. But all you gotta do is pull these in and you pull this out. And you'll see the filter here. So this filter is gross. Uh, the best way to do this is because I don't want to get anything wet in this component because I want to use this right away. Is um, let's get your blower and blow it out. And so the air goes in this way. So we want to blow it out the opposite direction. Some of your machines might have replaceable filters in the side of them. Mine does not. So we could take those off and scrub them, but then we'd have to wait for them to dry before you'd use them. All right. It's really hard to get back into those into this to get this coil cleaned up and whatnot. So again, a trusty blower. Let's put it back together and hook it up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it off with a paper towel. I'm not going to bore you with that just because it's been sitting around forever. It's covered in dust. Uh, but make sure you get brand new uh, distilled water to fill up your coolers with. I only use distilled water. And if you're curious why, I just made a video that tells you why right here. Actually, well, maybe it's here or here. I don't know but it'll be there somewhere. They'll probably, years down the road, change it, and it'll be down here instead of up here or up here. And then I'll be like pointing and pointing to the wrong thing. So it'll be kind of funny, but it's around here somewhere. Something will pop up. 
Let's fill this up with brand new distilled water. If you're working in a clean environment, you should use a funnel. I'm not. I'm back in my old barn. I do have a facility, but it's full and I don't have the old laser there to work on. So let's uh, not care if we get water on the floor. Okay, so your uh, thing should take maybe a gallon, gallon and a half of water, two gallons. Don't know what your system is. Mine took a gallon and a half. So let's um, hook it up to the machine. So I'm going to have to take you off the tripod for this. Sorry about that. Okay, so it doesn't matter. We're just going to hook up the outlet here to our little surgical hose that it came with. And I'll hook up the inlet just by pushing them on. Back of the machine we'll take the outlet and we'll come up here hook the outlet into the inlet of the laser. Now we have the inlet here. We have the inlet here. And then we'll plug it into the outlet of the machine. So the water's coming out of the machine. Going, sorry, the water's going out of the laser. And then into the cooler. Then out of the cooler. And going into the machine. And while I'm back here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my air assist. Here. So there's my air assist tube. Okay, so I like to have my water cooler plugged into the ports in the back of the machine before the electric. That way when the machine turns on, the coolers turn on. And same thing with the air assist. Assuming you just have a normal pump air assist and you didn't go out and buy yourself an air compressor or something for the... That way it will turn on and I have my air assist and my cooling will be on. Don't turn your fan on there. Have your fan be on a separate switch somewhere else because it consumes more, a lot of energy and then you're going to start seeing ports uh, getting too warm and melting and whatnot on your power ports because of um, it's just not enough wire there it's only a 10, 10 amp socket on your laser so really the cooler is probably almost too much for on top of everything else so make sure your fans are hooked up through a different switch system it can all be on the same electrical circuit just a different different switch have so it turns off separately from the machine. So we'll plug those in and I'm gonna to try to fire this for the first time. Okay, so on my air assist, it's really simple. I'm just going to what I like to do, you know, just the little hose plugs in there, that's really it. And I am going to uh, plug it into the back machine, but I am gonna set the mo the motor on this piece of foam rubber and that'll keep it quiet and keep it from moving around a little more shock absorbent. And by the way, if you didn't know, lasers can cut foam rubber very, very well. Check the link up here in my other videos. Sorry, I am sweating. Okay, so I'm pretty upset at myself because I only have one power adapter and I thought it was for the laser, but I think I stole the one from the water cooler. So I'm missing a power adapter, so I'm not gonna be able to throw smoke on this today. I was praying I'd be able to get this thing up and running. I might even take the time, run over to our new workshop over it in uh, Tarleton, Ohio, footstepsinthepast.com and see if uh, I got an extra one over there just so I can use this today. But anyways, I am going to go ahead and post this video. This is Jay. Thanks for stopping. Catch you later.